Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Zabo. Today we're going to be talking about indirect proof. This is section 5.1 in your textbooks. Indirect proof in Latin is known as reductio ad absurdum. That means reduced to an absurdity. So the idea behind this is it's very difficult to prove a negative, to prove something did not happen or two things are not equal. So in order to do that, we're going to have to make some assumptions. And those assumptions we're going to use in proofs to go ahead and come up with some absurd statement or specifically something that doesn't make sense geometrically or doesn't make sense with the given information with a theorem with a definition that we know that'll contradict so the idea of contradiction is going to be really important here as you can see over here our dragon friend is saying that essentially we're using indirect proof when do I use it when the word not or the not symbol or not equal to not congruent is going to be in your proof specifically that's what you're being asked to prove so if we look at our first example here and we will be asked to do this using paragraph proof I know that's not the best information for you guys but make sure that you're specific make sure you're clear and precise and make sure that you go over everything in detail here now, I know I'm using indirect proof because I've been asked to prove that two triangles are not congruent. I want to make an assumption here. I am going to assume that they are congruent. Because if I can assume that they are congruent, I should be able to find some sort of a contradiction. So up here in the red, that's just what not the assumption I'm going to make. Down here in black, I'm going to write out what I'd want to see as a paragraph proof. The first sentence should be our assumption. I'm going to write that I am assuming or assume triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, period. Now I'm going to look up at my given information. I'm given that those two angles are not congruent. But I've just made this assumption. By this assumption, angle B and E are corresponding angles. They should be congruent. So because of this assumption, so I can say, therefore, angle B is congruent to angle E by CPCTC. However, that contradicts directly a given statement. That's our absurdity. That's the thing that we have to point out in our paragraph. So right away now I can go ahead and say, however, this contradicts the given that angle B is not congruent to angle E. Therefore, our assumption must be false. And you always have to end stating that you found your contradiction, your assumption is false, and then state the alternative. The only other alternative if our assumption is false is that the triangles triangle ABC and triangle DEF are not congruent. So I have ended with my proof statement and I just did so indirectly. All right, I think we want to take a look at one more together and then I'm going to go ahead and let you guys try a few. So this one's going to be a little bit more piecemeal, but same idea. I look and I'm asked to prove the two segments are not congruent. So the assumption I'm going to make is that they are. That segment AS is congruent to segment AM. I'm going to go down and start my paragraph proof that way. Assume segment AS is congruent to segment AM. So I'm going to go to my diagram and I'm going to mark that. I'm going to assume those are congruent segments. I've also been given that AU and SM, those segments are perpendicular. So I've got a lot of options here of where I can go. But 
I do know that segment AU is perpendicular, so if I'm going to use that given information, I can state right angles and then take that the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and pause to write this out. And through the magic of video, my sentence is done. I just stated that the given information states they're perpendicular, therefore we have right angles, and those angles are congruent. That's the, the three steps you need to state in that sentence. Lastly, we can conclude, or we can say that segment AU is congruent to itself, and therefore we have congruent triangles those triangles are congruent by HL so in fact I technically didn't even need to state that my right angles were congruent because I just need right angles congruent and congruent hypotenuse and leg any way we look at that I now have congruent triangles which means that segment AS and segment AM are congruent segment AU is congruent to itself but it also means that segment SU is congruent to segment UM and there's our contradiction since that's our contradiction, I have to write a sentence, why are they congruent, based on my assumptions, state that they're contradicted, state that our assumption is wrong, that was our assumption, and so, our proof statement. Since our assumption was wrong, the only other option was that they're not congruent, and we're done. There are two more practice problems on here. What I'd like you guys to do is press pause and see if you can come up with a proof for this next one. And it can be done the same fashion. Assume the negation of our proof statement. So remember, if I'm negating a negative, it becomes a positive. So if JP does not bisect that angle, the negation is that it does bisect that angle. So press pause now and try this example. When you unpause, I'll have the answer to this example. All right, hopefully you had a chance to wrap this up. Our assumption that that ray does bisect the angle gives us two congruent angles. We are given segment HJ and segment JK are congruent and we have reflexive property, so that allows us to conclude by side angle side that our triangles are congruent, which means our segments are congruent, which means P is a midpoint, and that's our contradiction. So we state that we have, we state both parts of the contradiction, state it's a contradiction, our assumption must be wrong, therefore JP does not bisect angle HJK. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's try one more. Again, just like before, I want you to pause, try it on your own, only unpause after you have tried it. Pause now. All right, so for this last problem, we are assuming that our angles are congruent. And because these angles are congruent, because we have congruent radii and the reflexive property, our triangles are congruent. Because our triangles are congruent, AB is congruent to BC. However, that's our contradiction. AB cannot be congruent to BC. Our assumption must be false, and our angles then are not congruent. Again, just to quickly summarize, as we are looking at indirect proof, we want to identify the desired conclusion or proof statement. We can use this no matter what. It's typically done when our proof statement is a negative when it is a not equal to or a not congruent that's when we typically are going to use indirect proof we assume the negation of that statement we then follow the chain of reasoning that we have until we contradict either a given piece of information a theorem a definition some known fact once we contradicted one of those things state that our assumption is false and that the original conclusion, therefore, must be true.